psychological as you come to terms of the price of the uplifters of fire and be our shepherd guide us and strengthen us in Jesus name we pray we live Amen, 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 Amen We have our seats Thank you so much music team for moderating this program but as you come just to welcome all of us, welcome to St. Ambalino, uh, where we'll be having this memorial service for Brother Nick. And um, I pray that God will continue pouring his comfort into our hearts. For those who may be still new with the geography of this compound, you are wondering where to visit. The VIP chapels, the um, place you can visit to. Um, there is one on top of us here. So if you just take the stairs, you go to the system. There's also one across on the other side. So feel free and uh, feel welcome. And God is faithful. So I want to invite my colleague, Pastor Dana, to guide us from here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome even as well. I'm not on the sea. Welcome to Stern Valley Road. Uh, again, as we celebrate the life of our brother. Uh, first, I want to ask Felista uh, Aoko to come and give us first reading. Felista Aoko, first reading, then to be followed by Priscilla Achim, then Jacqueline Namado. So, in that order. Elisa, Priscilla, and Church. Um, my apologies, my boss needs to be shaking. Uh, I know my brother here <laughs> who would love me to be strong standing here today the morning. Uh, I'm going to read the first reading from the book of uh, Psalm. Uh, Psalm chapter 103 verse 13. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. For he remembers that we are dust. As, uh, as for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it and it is gone. And its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from the everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and the righteousness to the children's children. That is the word of that is the word of the Lord. Thank you. The second reading the second reading comes from the book of Revelation, chapter twenty one, verse one to four. And it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there, was, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. That's the word of God. Our third reading comes from Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that is the word of the Lord. Now, my name is Gordon Akworo. Uh, I'm going to do Nick. Uh, I won't say much about Nick uh, uh, because uh, it's not very easy. It is really a challenging time for us. But uh, let me say that uh, we need a little prayers. <laughs> as a core family because for one uh, what I've seen is like uh, in my sister's family this month of August has become like a jeans in the family In the year 2011, two of my sister's sons also died in a very tragic accident. Differently, one died along Mombasaro and the other one died in the lake, Lake Victoria. <coughs> they all died almost the same time, same period. So when we were burning Nick, when we were burning uh, James, Jim was named after my dad. The other brother, boss, was about to be found to date. and get back. When Jim died along Mombasa Road, somewhere Makutano, <coughs> by then I was working with the uh, Sima Cement, National Cement Company. <coughs> and my sister, Maybe she is not here, she is at home. Called me around afternoon hours and told me. She asked me, Where are you? Are you in the office? I told her, Yes. enough and told me to rush to somewhere along the 
Salon, Salama called Salama. I could imagine where Salama is, but I didn't know where it was. <coughs> she told me, Jim, it's like I got an accident. So I should rush there and check on him. I immediately left the office and went to Salama. In Salama I saw the bus at the police station. <coughs> the police asked me whom I was looking for. I told them the names. And they referred me to Machakos. When I read my tacos, Jim was home. I found him in the book, and that was it. By the time we were arranging for his burial, what came around that his immediate follower had a demise in the lake in Victoria. A poor tragedy. We did what we could do for him. He was living in South Beach and took the body home. Now come this August. <coughs> I got a call from my <coughs> younger brother. The last one in our family. He also, <coughs> he also asked me where I was. I told him, I'm not left home, I'm just at home. He asked me, have you heard what happened? I told him, no. <coughs> then he broke the news to me. I live far past Kurigela. I saw such who was around <coughs> Mombasa Road. I called my nephew. No, my niece. Rispa. Rispa is around with us. She told me she was uh, on her way to do some work. She had booked a flight. <coughs> and the flight had slightly delayed, that's why she was around. Then I called my daughter, my last born daughter, Priscilla. <laughs>
cut it short, Nick is gone. As a family, I don't know how these august things can be broken. <coughs> Becoming a terrible people of my sister's family. I pray that the church, because it's difficult to talk about other things. I believe that the church should strongly pray for our family. In 2011, when we buried Jim in Sakwa, I went up. I talked to Nick briefly. He told me what he was bringing to Sumo. Then I felt since Jim had gone, it wasn't enough. So I took him with me. I was living in Athirino. And I knew where I was working. Simba Cement. Since I had a good rapport with the human resource manager, we could create a chance for him. I came with him, took him with me, I lived with him, and within a week, we had arrived. And he secured employment with Simple Cement in 2011. He worked up to 2012 <coughs> in the storm. <coughs> Simple Cement has a very big storm. small problem towards the end of 2012.
in the Lord's duty. And in the morning of that day, he had actually met a few of my nephews in South Bay. So come six in the evening, there was a problem. And the problem is here with us. I don't have much to say. Nick is gone. Has left a very, very young family. Very young. Nick's daughter is only six months old. There is nothing much you can do. We have to be strong. I'm sorry, I'm slightly weak in front of you people. But that is human nature. Forgive me for that. I would request that all of us <coughs> be ready. Because all of us will die one day, one time. You have to be ready. You have always to speak to your God. Because that is the only protector. There is no any other protector than God. He is in as a Mitishamba. Let's forget about it. Thank you so much <coughs> for your support. leading a team that is, has been very good, very cooperative. I'd like to thank you, team, and everybody, including Western, <coughs> Nick's workmates, colleagues, <coughs> Tanisha's workmates, Their core of family, <coughs> that cohesion must continue. Western people, I don't have much to say about you, but it's so good, <coughs> so so good. Thank you so much, and God bless you. <coughs> Thank you, Judge, for your time. Thank you, Anka. Shall we pray that God will continue to be with our hearts? Good morning, everyone. Praise God. Praise God again. Um, uh, I don't think I. Uh, had the opportunity to actually um, sink in this reality. I think from the time I got the call about uh, Nick, who's been a dear friend, um, my mind decided not to process that as a reality. And just um, standing <coughs> next here, I think is when I'm slowly but steadily processing the reality that I'll never get to speak to Nick in person. So. Just to um, help me say what needs to be said on behalf of all of Nick's friends, I will read a tribute um, that was dedicated to him by his friends. To our dear friend Nick, Heaven blessed us richly when our paths crossed many years ago. 
The timeline may be different for each one of us, but what remains consistent is the friendship you grew in each of us. Day after day, you showed us what it meant to be dependable, trustworthy, and kind. On Monday, August 5th, in the middle of the afternoon, heaven whispered your name, and our time with you on this side of life was up. We were not really weak. Nothing could have prepared us. The heartache has been indescribable. The grief has been gut-wrenching. But grief is a price we pay for love. And grief is only born out of great love. To everyone that knew and loved Nick, we hope that you can find comfort in the words of the author, Donna Ashworth, Great Grief. Great Grief. Don't fall out of love with the world because they no longer live in it. Instead, be grateful that this world produced them. Be glad that this life ever existed and that you were blessed enough to love them then and love them still. Don't fall out of love with this world because it will not keep your heart full. Instead, let love be the glue, patch it up and fill it with joy Joy that you, you know firsthand of this bittersweet conundrum that grief is, is born only of great love. I would like to conclude Nick's tribute from his friend with a Catholic prayer for the departed. Eternal rest grant unto Nick, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Eternal rest grant unto me, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Eternal rest grant unto me, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May Nick's soul and the souls of all faithful departed through the mercy of God. Good afternoon and rest in peace and praise God. Uh, my name is Agnes. I'm Tenisha's grandmother. And I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Tenisha's mother, who is our grandmother who departed from us, and all my senior uh, sister, brothers, and sisters, the entire uh, grandparents. Uh, of our uh, Savior and the Western uh, Block. We gather to honor the life of our young grandson. Nick was a grandson. Tinisha is our granddaughter. Nick left us too soon. And as um, Uncle Gordon, the one who spoke here first, said, it's very, very sad. And uh, we just ask for prayers from each and every one of you. You've seen how touching this uh, was and how sudden and sad it is to be such a young life. Like Uncle Gordon said, I also got a call. I'll not repeat everything. But the children, that's my niece and the daughter, Tenisha, they told me they were at Spring Valley Police Station. But they had been a mark stand until uh, Nick was no more. It was very, very sad, very hard to. Even get down to pray. Even a Christian at that moment can be overcome. I could not pray. I had to hold myself up and be able to call family and friends and the church even to stand with us to put us in prayer. 
as we tried to process what had just happened. We were very delighted to have received a grandson, a granddaughter introduced to us, a young man who we received as a grandson. Thank you, Tanisha, for having introduced to us Nick, who we all love at this, even in death. We still this is we love here to, to start here. Much as we are broken, we start knowing that the Lord, only the Lord, has come to take us. And to Tanisha, I'll leave you with two verses. Isaiah 40, 41, verse 10, fear not, as the Lord is with you. Another one I will leave you with is Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and says those who are Christ in spirit. I pray that the Lord hear my prayer and deliver us from our fears. Fare me well, my grandson, till we meet again. Thank you for hearing.
we are not going that direction again.
Denise Matenge. I'm born again, Christ is Lord. Uh, fellowship and uh, I serve at the Deliverance Church, the ring. Uh, Madam Patsy is a friend and a colleague. We work together, and that's why we have come to console. Tanisha also is a friend of mine. I met her through her mom. Therefore, we bring our condolences to you and may the Lord comfort you. I just want to leave you with the words of the book of Psalms, chapter number 46, that says, The Lord is my refuge. May the Lord be your refuge at such a time like this. And it says that He is the present help in time of trouble. So, in such a time like this, may the Lord be our refuge. The same to the family of our brother Nick. May the Lord be your strength in such a time like this and may He comfort and strengthen you. May the Lord God bless you. Praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Arevet Moli and I'm here with my wife. Here we are pastors in the Outpost Pentecostal Fellowship. And uh, we are here to bring our condolences, knowing that it's only God who can understand what you are going through. Times like this, even with friends and um, even fellow Christians stand with you, uh, God stands better. Because he understands exactly what you are going through, even when somebody tells you, I know what you are going through, they may not be right. But you know God is going to strengthen you. Uh, we are here because one of, our, of us in the church is also a member of this family. This is Uncle Andrew told us about it, and that's why we are here to bring our condolences. May the Lord call all peace and give you peace. His peace is the only one which transcends all understanding and is able to guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. May that peace rest with this family and the spirit which has been mentioned here about accidents. We stand together with those who are saying, we must come to an end in Jesus' name. Praise Jesus. Yes, my name is Teresia Mule. We come to condone with you and just encourage the family in somewhat the book of Proverbs. As we pray that the Lord is going to strengthen your spirit. The Bible says the spirit of a man is able to strengthen him through adversity. And we pray that the Lord is going to strengthen the spirit of the family members to be able to surmount this adversity. May the Holy Spirit keep guard over you as you travel this journey, that the Lord will stand closer and that you are going to feel Him in every way possible. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for the opportunity. Praise God. Praise God again. Uh, I would like to recognize my friends and colleagues, just stand up, just to wear this. My friends and colleagues. Thank you so much for the immense support and love that you have shown us, especially during this difficult time of our lives. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, I because for losing a son, Nick was a son to me. And the first time I met Nick, I was at peace that this is a good boy. Because as a parent, you will know when person is good. Your instincts will always tell you that when somebody is good. Nick was very respectful because Nick when he made
met my daughter, which was uh, the year 2018. They were friends before they started dating. And Nick was very respectful to me because if they were able to get a child in 2024, 20, it means this was a respectful young man, right? And he was always protecting my child and he loved my daughter. It pains my heart as a parent to be the one bearing me because when Nick took my daughter, I knew I had found a son who is going to bury me. And it is with a heavy heart that I'm standing here before you to be talking about Nick in death. Uh, when it happened, it was on 5th August. I normally talk to my daughter, even five times a day. And sometimes she's the one who will tell me, Mom, Sasa, in the Tosha, what an came to. That is the kind of relationship I have with my daughter. So on this day, we had talked during the day. In the morning, I had called her, but she did not tell me that she was not going to work. When I just called her in the morning, she didn't tell me she had not gone to work. But later on in the day, she told me, Mom, I, I didn't tell you, um, today I'm feeling very tired. I'm not able to go to work because even the young girl, my, my granddaughter was unwell. So I think the fact that the, the child was unwell, she decided that she would take uh, an, an, an off from her workplace and stay at home. So we talked about twice. Then at around five, when I was leaving the office, I called her and I told her, I'm going home now. But I was going to pass somewhere before going home. And so when uh, I got there, my daughter called me crying. And I was like, why? Because as a parent, you know, when you talk to your child, you always listen, you always have the you know the other sense of the, the other sense that you have you listen to the voice and when she talks you will know all is well but when she called this time she was crying and she told me mom i have been called at spring valley police station that nick has been involved in an accident and my heart just sank because I was like, why are they calling her to go to a police station? Why can't they tell her to go to a hospital? And, but I became strong for her. I told her not to cry. And so uh, immediately I embarked on, she was in town, and I just took an Uber and went. When I got to Ngara, there was traffic, and I just jumped on for a motorbike. We got, when I got to town, we, we did not even ask for an Uber, we just got into a motorbike and went to uh, this valley police station. And I remember just getting into the office, I did not even wait to ask. I just got into the office and, and I was told to wait. And that also told me that maybe all is not well but i was just being strong for my child so later on uh, when we were told that we, we were waiting for the OCS, we were with nick's brother evans and when they told us to wait because he had not arrived they said they are waiting for him because he's their colleague so uh when when we when nick, uh, when uh, evans arrived we were told to, to give them time that they want to speak with Evans. And all this time I was praying, praying that, uh, you, know, you know, even in distress, you still have to remember God, and that is what I did. 
And uh, that is when, um, as we were outside, one of the police officers just held my hand and told me, Mom, at least you, you have seen a lot in this world. Because my daughter had gone to the washroom. And when I just, I did not even listen to him. I just asked him, Pijana Yuko, Maka Yuko. That is when he told me, Ayuko. And that just broke my world. Because that is the way now my daughter was able to know what had happened. Because I just broke down and was just screaming all over. And that is the time now I also called my auntie to, to inform her what had happened. Now, I'll talk about my relationship with God. I pray every day in the morning and evening. And this time, I told God there at the police station, I, I even prayed for this boy this morning, what happened? Because as a parent, that is the only thing you can do to cover your children. And so I asked God, what happened? I mentioned Nick's name this morning, what happened? And I'm here in church to ask God for forgiveness. Because as a human being, you can ask yourself questions. But I'm still thanking the same God. Because for me to be talking here right now, it is God. The last two weeks have been a nightmare for me. Because I have been carrying my own pain and carrying the pain of my daughter. Because seeing your child break down is very painful for a parent. Because if your child is sick, you can talk to the doctor and tell them, give them a painkiller. There is no painkiller for this kind of pain. The only thing I can do is to ask the church, to ask you to put my daughter in prayer and my granddaughter and the entire family, our entire family in prayer so that God, because he is a God of mercies, he is a gracious God just to see us through this difficult time because he has done it for us for the last two weeks. For us to be here sincerely, it is God. Um, like I said, Nick was a very respectful person. I would still say that. I will still, even in the, even after this, I will always have good memories of this young man who was a true, a true, a true, uh, I'll say he, he's, he, he had great virtues, very respectful, very noble, very generous, very kind. I have never met, and I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart, I'm not saying this because I, Nick is gone. He knew the kind of relationship I had with them. Because I, when the baby was born, Nick told my daughter, tell mom to, be, to just come and stay with us. There's nothing wrong with her staying with us. And so, for that, I'm saying that this young man was one of a kind. One of a kind that I have never met. So I will read my tribute to Nick. Nick. My dear son, words cannot express the depth of the sorrow I have in my heart, knowing that you are no longer here with us. The love, the support, the way you honored, not only Tintin. Tintin, we, we normally shorten her name to Tintin. But our family, uh, it is why it has been a, a privilege to have you as part of our family. You are a true blessing, son, beyond what I could ever have hoped for. The love, the care, and respect you treated my daughter with, with is a true statement of the man you are. The unwavering love and respect you had for her for me and your child, give me peace in knowing we are safe with you. 
Tintin had found a soulmate. Our family had found a son. We are, we were proud of. And with that, you gave me uh, all the blessings to know that you are, you have a, a profound sense of peace. It has been one of the most difficult things for me to do, to try to comprehend a world where you are not with us. I may not understand why this had to happen, but I thank you for being the strength for my child when she needed it most. I thank you for showing her love that I still see with her today. I thank you for giving us the chance to grow our family through your daughter. Most importantly, I thank you for being the son I never knew I needed. I'm grateful to have experienced, <coughs> but I'm grateful to have experienced. I love you. Then we all love you, Nick. God's plan may not make sense to us, but I know moving forward, you will continue to protect us. I'm reminded in the Bible where it says he heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. I keep these words closed because it may never make sense to us why this happened. But I promise to continue to do what you did. And that is to take care. She can't tell me to go to the police station that Nick has been involved in an accident. But I kept insisting that I want to go to the hospital where he has been rushed to. But the police could not tell me the hospital. So I called my friend Dennis, who lives around Spring Valley, and told him to just rush there and find out the hospital. I really wanted Nick to be in the <coughs> hospital at least. So Dennis got there and kept calling me and saying that they're saying he waits. I called my brother-in-law Evans and told him that I've been caught by a police officer saying Nick is in an accident. We all rushed there. When we got there, they kept telling us to wait. In fact, the, the inspector was annoyed by the, annoyed that I was called by the police officer. So he, he actually told me that Nick is in a hospital. But when they called Evans aside and my mom and told them that Nick, Nick had a And how they described the accident just broke me. I really wanted to see Nick, but it was it was already late, and we had to wait till the next morning. So we went to City Mortuary to view his body. I still couldn't believe it. it took me about three days to come to terms that Nick is no more. Nick was amazing. He was the best. He loved me and I loved him so much. I'm glad I got to experience such a love. It is not easy, it is tough, but I want to thank you all for being here, for all the comforting messages, for the visits at home. I do not take that for granted. Continue praying for us. It shall be well. I'd like to read the truth. <coughs> I wake up each day shattered by the loss of my best friend, my soulmate, 
my partner, try to find the words to share with you all today, but to try share the loss of a man who showed me a love so pure and true. Not only through the love he showed me, but the love for our daughter. The love he showed for his family. A love that I am grateful to to have experienced has and will forever remain the most difficult and painful thing I will ever have to do. He showed love in all he did. A soul that is gentle. A man who made sure a day would not pass without a laugh and his warmth. Although our time together was brief, what we shared remains with us forever. His legacy through our child will be known through all who get to interact with her. I am left heartbroken, but the saying goes, a heart that is broken is a heart that has been loved. And for that I thank you, whether it be in this life or the next. I thank him, I love him, I'm grateful for him and who he has been for me and our family. I do not understand why this has happened, and to be honest, I doubt I will ever, if I ever will. I struggle to comprehend God's plan, but I trust in his wisdom and know that in some way beyond my understanding, this is part of his greater design. As hard as it is to accept, I find solace in knowing that God showed me what true love is through my husband, and in a world where many never get to experience that, I'm grateful his plan is always for the best, even when it's painful. In Isaiah 41, 10, the Lord says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will upload, uphold you with my righteous right hand. I hold on to this promise, believing that God will give me the strength to carry on, not just for me, but for my daughter. Even in the face of this unimaginable loss, he may be gone from the world, but will forever remain in my heart. I love you, Nick. I bless you forever and always. I'd like to give a special thanks to my church, Sitam Picaro for standing with me during this time, and Sitam in general. I've been receiving calls from all the branches of Sitam. Thank you so much. Amen. We want to six six eight three six nine. The number is the name is Golden Aquaro. Again, zero seven two zero eight three six nine. I mean, how to be projected? Zero seven two zero eight three six nine. The name is Golden Aquaro.